And we're back, our guests on this segment, Linda Polson and Brenda Duran. It's good to have you guys here. Co-directors, by the way, of the food pantry at Claremore's First Methodist Church. And they're also partners with the Community Food Bank of Northeast Oklahoma. You work with some good friends of ours over there. It's good to have you guys here to talk well, about Well, thank it. you. We're glad to be here. Tell me about uh, what you got going on at the church. Well, it's an amazing program. Uh, I did some statistics just to be able to tell you how much of an impact we have on Rogers County. I added up the poundage that we get from collection from the food bank, of uh, Community Food Bank of Eastern Oklahoma, and from our community and other partners here in the community. And it was over 326,000 pounds, which correlates to 163 tons this year of food has come into our church to be distributed to the families of Rogers County. And that's, we service, uh, I looked at those numbers too, and we have serviced uh, 15,000, over 15,000 individuals so far this year. Ever feel like a walking calculator? <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought that was impressive to see what impressive. kind of numbers because when you tra serving. that translates into a lot of folks not going being, hungry being helped yes. it does we have some video from the food bank from the northeast oklahoma food bank we, uh, emily if you'd roll that for us it gives us an idea of, of some of the things going on over there some young folks that are volunteering uh, to help and they work with you in the church and you're you're co-directors of the food bank at the Methodist Church here, are you not? Yes. Tell us a bit about it. Okay, well, we distribute food every Tuesday and Thursday uh, from 9 o'clock in the morning till 4.45 in the afternoon. Um, we stay very busy on those days, uh, especially this time of year. Thanksgiving and Christmas are, are big mm -hmm. times. Fortunately, we are well stocked at this time of the year with all the food drives and the food banks, so we're fortunate there. Most of our, or I'd say all of our neighbors are very appreciative of what we do for them. I hear stories, I work in the actual distribution on Tuesdays, every Tuesday, mm -hmm. along with uh, helping a little bit with the food that comes in. I get to visit with our neighbors and they tell us how much they appreciate what we're able to do for them that they would not be able to feed their families if it wasn't for the church helping them. You know, the old MASH outfits mm -hmm. that we saw, we've seen MASH on television uh, and a lot of folks didn't understand why there was so much humor and wisecracking and all that. And one of them defined it as, well, you have to do something to maintain your sanity, otherwise you're gonna fall down crying. You guys must see a lot of heartbreak come through the door on a regular basis. Yes, we do. Uh, like I said, being able to be there on Tuesdays to help the neighbors, I hear stories. I had one lady just tell me last week that she takes in disadvantaged kids. Um, and she said without our help, she would not be able to feed the children that she brings into her home. A um, few months ago, I had one younger lady came in and her husband had just been diagnosed with cancer. So their resources were going to their um, medical expenses and travel. Mm -hmm. She said they just did not have the money to buy the food that they needed. And this is, we see this every week come into the church. And when you couple that with the incredible number of young folks in this area, and in the Tulsa region, who go to bed hungry every night, who have to have assistance with meals at school, mm -hmm. sometimes the burden is almost overpowering. So you guys are really playing a major role in helping to alleviate that. And it takes a lot of people it to does. do. It does, it does. We have over a, about 120 volunteers that just work on the intake of food, the 163 tons of food coming through our doors. And then we have another 20 to 25, mostly women who actually um, meet 
and the, the people coming in for assistance. There's a, a very regimented process for them to qualify to get the food. And then our ladies go into our storage area where the, we have refrigerators and freezers and shelves stocked with food, and they actually shop for the family. Okay. So if there's yeah. two people or eight people in the family, then they get the, the, the amount of food needed for that family and fill up the grocery um, shopping carts. We have actual shopping carts and sacks. We fill those up with the food. They take that down the hall back to the family and they offer a, a, to pray or find out if there's any other needs in their family before they depart. Mm -hmm. um, Help me understand because I'm a little hazy in one area here. Uh, someone comes to your door, they, they knock, they come in, whatever, and they say, I need assistance. These folks are checked out yes. before you start to hand out food. Is that correct? And how do you, how do you check them? Well, um, they have to have identification to show that they're a Rogers County resident mm -hmm. because we do limit our scope to Rogers County. Um, we do not make them prove that they have a certain amount of members in their family. We will take their word for it. Um, we believe that they're honest about um, how many are in their family. Mm -hmm. So we give them assistance once every 30 days. Um, we have it on a computer system, so when they come back in, they have to wait that 30 days. We will give them enough groceries for three days, uh, three meals for three days. So we're mostly just an assistance program to help them over the hump, you know, to mm -hmm. aid them. Mm -hmm. You know, hunger doesn't recognize race or creed or color. Oh, not it at all. It doesn't care who it hurts. Mm -hmm. Doesn't care at all. And I saw the statistics recently for Tulsa Public Schools for the number of children in school that have to have federal help just in the lunch program. It's well over 70 percent now in climbing, which if you couple that with the groups that work for, with the homeless folks in the downtown area, and it happens here too, all of a sudden you realize we've got a major problem here. But it's not just here, it's all across the country. So it's good to see actual boots on the ground, such as you folks, you know, in the distribution of food. Is there ever a shortage over there of people coming in? A shortage of people coming in? No, there's, sometimes there's a shortage of food to go out. With That's, all that you're taking in. With all that we're no. taking in. Uh, we, we seem to cycle through feast and famine. There are times when our shelves are stocked to the ceiling and there are times that we can barely get enough food together mm -hmm. to give to the, uh, to the clients. You know, and the, the Eastern Oklahoma F Food Bank is just absolutely an amazing um, agency that we can reach out to to get that food that is needed for our community. They are that. And the idea that you've managed to to couple with the food bank, because I mean, they do an incredible job too, but it's like they have told us, you know, sometimes we go to bed wishing we could do more, but we gotta get some sleep sometime. So you've gotta feel the same way when you walk away thinking, oh my Lord, how do I tackle this problem? And it's not, you can't wear it all the time. No, no. You know, there've got to be stress relievers for you. What, uh, are, are, you said how many rooms at the church you have? The equivalent of three classrooms. We have a double size room that, that could be two classrooms mm -hmm. that are where we have our main food that is gathered to disperse. And then we have another classroom that's used as a storeroom where we stack the, we get, oftentimes it's, um, we get more beans or dried beans or our rice than we can put on the shelving unit. So that's a storeroom for us. But we have two freezers in there as well. I think we have a total of 17, 17 refrigerators, refrigerators and freezers. freezers. 
and a big walk-in cooler out in our parking lot. Which you've got to have. Yes. Well, yes, to, to mm -hmm. handle that mm -hmm. amount of food to, the, to come in and, and be distributed. Okay, if you could do a letter to Santa, what would you ask for? What do you need? Probably uh, money and support and canned goods for the, the food bank and for the individual agencies throughout Rogers County mm -hmm. that, that do this kind of distribution. There's a great need and they can help if they, you know, I, I try to encourage people to every week grab two cans out of your pantry, two or three cans, and put it in a sack and bring it to the church on Sunday morning. We have a cart right by the front door, set, set it in. Make it a Make habit. It a habit. And you don't miss those two, two or three cans out of your pantry. Mm -hmm. And that multiplied by 100, 200, 300 people every week makes a huge impact. So that coupled with what you're able to get from the food bank. Absolutely. And you could really enhance it more. Well, I hope the message gets out. I am, uh, did you have any idea when you started this program how much of a demand there would be? Well, neither one of us were involved in the, in the program when it started. And I think it's been going on at our church for about 12 years is my, mm -hmm. at my recollection. It started out in a janitor's closet. Get with, out of here. With one little set of shelves. Is now, that right? Yes, yes. And it has grown and grown because we see the demand. We, we do a lot of fundraising. We have two uh, huge, huge, massive garage sales every year to help raise money. And part of that money goes to purchasing that food at the, at the food bank. Some of it comes to us uh, as USDA mm -hmm. distribution food, but, but a lot of it we purchase and we do that. And it's, you still need help. Everybody would. I mean, I, all of the agencies. Folks, do. I, I don't think folks at home realize how serious this problem is and how widespread it is. Hey, I want to thank you guys for coming in, and thank you for the job you're doing. And tell the folks at the church we said hey, and we'll be checking back well, with you as time that. goes by. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you again. We're all out of time for this edition of Perspectives. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.